Welcome. Today is Thursday, January 26, and this is the International Space Station update from Mission Control uh, at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Today on board the International Space Station, that Expedition 30 crew has uh, been busy this morning. They've already had their breakfast and their lunch. Don um, Pettit has uh, been working on the ISAC, which is the uh, International Space Station Agricultural Camera. That camera takes photos of vegetated areas uh, of the northern Great Plains. The camera was built by uh, students at the University of North Dakota and is actually run by those students. In addition, Pettit has um, uh, also been uh, working on a number of other things in the lab. Uh, he made sure that that uh, agricultural camera was open. Uh, Andre Coupers has been um, working uh, with the viable payload. That uh, payload is a, a study that involves the evaluation of micro, um, microbial biofilms. It actually studies uh, space materials. It looks at the metal and textile space materials, and uh, he's been working on that this morning. He's also been working on the compound-specific analyzer. That's an analyzer that uh, does some uh, studies on oxygen in the International Space Station. Corpers also um, has been spending some time working on the Cabo Laboratory. He's been working on the Clean Bench Functional Checkout. The Clean Bench is part of the JAXA, or Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, uh, experiments. It's a facility located in that laboratory, and it is located in the Cyboy, which is also known as the Living Cell Experiment Rack. That uh, Clean Bench has two compartments, a disinfection chamber and an operation chamber and air is circulated inside to keep it clean. Crew members operate the experiment materials from outside using gloves to prevent contamination of the ambient air. And uh, that uh, also has a very <coughs> extreme microscope so that they can study the articles in that uh, experiment. Corpers also has uh, been doing some swapping this morning. Uh, he's been swapping telemetry cables from the KU antenna group number two to number one. And uh, this uh, will provide uh, better television for uh, us here at the Johnson Space Center as we capture images from the International Space Station. Uh, also in other activities, uh, Commander Burbank uh, and uh, Don Pettit have been working with uh, nutrition activities throughout the day. They've been working on the Spheres port assembly, and they've also been working in the Melfi. And the International Space Station uh, Progress 46 cargo craft is also on its way to the International Space Station today. It launched late yesterday at 5.06 p.m. Central Time from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. After reaching orbit and deploying its solar arrays and navigational antennas, the Progress will conduct two automated rendezvous uh, burns. This will fine-tune its path to the International Space Station. Another such burn is on tap for later this afternoon with docking to the Piers Docking Compartment scheduled for tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Time. That uh, craft is loaded with nearly three tons of water, air, propellant, and equipment for the International Space Station. And other space station news, the same piece of space debris that has had uh, NASA considering safe haven for the crew and the Soyuz vehicles earlier this week is uh, still being tracked by our ballistics team. Overnight, the TOPOs, or the Trajectory Operations Officers, we're informed that another possible conjunction with that same piece of Chinese Fengyang satellite debris uh, with two possible close encounters for the station coming in the wee hours Sunday, those uh, that is being monitored by the crew um, and by the uh, team here at the uh, NASA's Johnson Space Center. Uh, as of this morning, that is considered a medium uh, concern for the International Space Station crew. But uh, again, mission controllers are considering some possible tweaks to the station's orbit after the docking of the Progress 46 Friday night. Today at NASA is the day of remembrance as we honor the crews of Apollo 1, Challenger, and Columbia. We will be honoring the men and women who lost their lives uh, during the space agency's uh, during the agency's space exploration program. We celebrate their lives and their bravery and the advancement in human space flight. Today, here at the Johnson Space Center at 2 p.m. Central Time, we will pause to remember those crews, the crews of Apollo 1, Challenger, and Columbia. These astronauts and their families will always be a part of NASA.